you've probably got to the point where you've just accepted that having blisters is a normal part of hiking, which it is absolutely not. So welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Chase. This is all about preparing your mind and your body and your gear for the mountains so you can get out there, challenge yourself and have a good time. And a good time on trail starts with having an environment within the shoe that is not causing you hotspots or blisters or creating an environment that is, for the lack of a better word, moist. So if you're experiencing any of those things and your feet aren't quite comfortable, if you haven't found the right sock for you yet, then I would encourage you to look at these five boxes that you should tick when you're looking at hiking socks. This is the very sock that I used to hike 820 kilometers and ascend and descend the equivalent of eight Mount Everests in about a month and they performed extraordinarily well. This is the new and improved version which I'm unreasonably excited to tell you about. I'm not going to tell you that this is the perfect sock for you, it will depend on your circumstances but if you're doing similar stuff to me, you know, long distance hiking, trail running in uh, dry alpine areas then this is probably a really good sock for you but either way these five things I think every sock should have no matter whether you're skiing, hiking, trail running, mountain bike riding, socks are super important and it's actually something that I'm pretty passionate about. Passionate about socks, I need to get a life. So what are these five boxes that I think every hiking sock should tick? And the first one comes down to the material in which the sock is made from, which should enable wicking, so drawing moisture away from the foot. It should enable cooling as well, so you don't get overheated within your shoe. And it also should be actively fighting bacteria within the foot, which we'll talk about later. The first and probably the most important thing I wanna say though is that you should stay away from cotton. Cotton is not a good material for a hiking sock for many reasons. I'm not gonna go into it now, but just trust me on this, don't hike in cotton socks, it's the worst. What I use and recommend, and what I've been recommending for quite a while now, is a wool synthetic blend, which is what this sock is. And I think most people are at this stage now where they understand that wool as a natural fiber with the synthetic blend is a really good mix because it's creating that structure, but it's also a natural fiber that works well with your skin. The reason why I recommend a wool synthetic blend is because it stays warm when it's wet, which is great for cold, wet weather. Rather than sapping the heat from your body, the wool will keep you warm even when it gets wet, so that's a huge plus. Wool is also naturally antimicrobial, which means you can wear these socks for days, maybe even weeks before having to wash them, which is a huge plus as a through hiker. It takes a long time for wool socks to actually hold an odor. <laughs> and yeah, about two weeks is the limit before it starts to get a little bit too dank. Wool also is quite a dense fiber, which is a good structural base for creating padding and support within the sock. And on top of that, when you add a synthetic blend, like a nylon into the sock, it adds a lot more durability and structure, which means the, the socks last a lot longer and there's a little bit more support within the sock itself rather than just having a, like a natural wool kind of bag on your foot. You want to have a little bit of structure within the sock itself. So the sock that I used on my through hike was this Silverlight sock. I talked it in both of my review videos earlier, but I really glazed over it and there's really a lot to go into. So this angle version I didn't end up using a lot. I only really used it when I'd been washing the crew version and they were still wet. So really I probably only did about maximum 50 kilometers in these, which means these have done about 750 kilometers at least. You know, I wore them beforehand on my shakedown hike and I wore them on a bunch of trail runs as well, just kind of getting used to them. So that's, for me, I mean, pretty impressive to have one little hole after that many kilometers. So there is a lifetime guarantee. If I bought these, I could just send them back and the company would send me a new one. So it's a pretty sweet deal. The actual makeup of the material in this sock is 45% nylon, 44% Australian merino wool, 7% silver yarn, and 4% spandex. Which brings me to the second box that your hiking socks should tick, and that is they have silver technology. And this is probably the key difference that sets this sock apart from any other sock that I've ever had and many other socks on the market. This is a wool synthetic silver blend, meaning that it has silver yarn, 
sewn into the sock. So the benefit of that is that while wool is antimicrobial, silver actually actively fights bacteria that is occurring within the environment within the shoe. As far as I know, silver is something that has been used for a very long time as a way to fight bacteria in all kinds of things. And I'm super happy that it's made its way into the world of socks and hiking socks in particular. So with a wool silver synthetic blend, you kind of have the best of both worlds in terms of comfort, durability, antimicrobial, and then the silver that actually actively fights the bacteria within the shoe. And I think there's a good argument for saying that the microbial side, the bacteria, is a big reason why people get blisters and have, have uncomfortable feet because it's that moisture in the environment within the shoe that is creating blisters and a very uncomfortable experience. One benefit for the long distance hiker who is moving very fast and can't allow time to sit down and wash the socks and wait for them to dry is that with this blend you can wear this sock for two weeks without having to wash it. Like I said I did a month long hike 820 kilometers and I probably washed these socks maybe three or four times maximum. So that gives you an idea of how long you can go before these things start to stink. Now that I think about it, it sounds a bit grubby, but honestly, they don't hold an odor and my feet were dry and healthy. I probably had one day where I had that typical stinky hiker foot and that was because it was a very wet day. And I think it all comes down to that silver, which is actually woven into the yarn and obviously helps that there's the wool component in there as well. So the older version of this sock, the one that I used on the trail, has silver yarn woven into the inner layer, which you can kind of really easily visibly see when you uh, invert the sock. But the newer version is using spun silver. This is basically silver yarn broken down into smaller pieces, so you get better distribution of silver throughout the sock, not just in the inner layer of the sock. So there's silver yarn throughout the whole sock in this new version. Now I assume the silver component also contributes to the sock having a light kind of compression element which is pretty well documented especially in the endurance world. So that's the second thing apart from wool and synthetic blend I would recommend really looking into a sock that has some kind of silver technology. So the third box that I think a good hiking sock should tick is that it has a seamless design. Now this might seem pretty obvious, especially if you've been hiking for a while, but you don't want to have an exposed seam within the sock because that's just going to create a space and an environment and something for your toes to rub up against and that's obviously going to create hot spots or even worse, blisters. And if you haven't looked into this before and you're going out and hiking in cotton socks with seams on the insides and they've got no moisture management properties whatsoever, you've probably got to the point where you've just accepted that having blisters is a normal part of hiking, which it is absolutely not. You should not be going out and having blisters every time you hike so if you are obviously check out your sock shoe combination but i think socks is something that's super overlooked and of course this is also determined by the fit of your boots and the way you tie your laces in order to, to reduce you know your foot sliding around within the shoe but the same goes for your socks you really want a nice tight fitted sock with as little wiggle room within the sock as possible. So if you have a look at the Silverlight sock here, the only noticeable seam that I can see is runs across the top of the toes here. And if you invert the sock, have a look at it from the inside, there is barely any evidence of a seam within the sock. And it's a pretty intelligent place to put the seam as well. You can just tell that they've thought a lot about the way that this sock is designed, which I just really love. Uh, <laughs> because when you're walking, you know, 800, 1,000, 2,000 kilometers, socks just become more and more and more important. The fourth box that your hiking socks should tick is that they should have a little bit of extra padding and some structure. And that's where the synthetic blend part comes in to give the socks some structure. The 7% spandex, I'm guessing, would be in the midfoot here which helps to really cinch the sock through your arch so you get a really nice tight fit and I imagine there's probably some spandex round through the upper ankle here as well but obviously you want to have some extra padding especially around the heel and around the forefoot where the sock is going to have a little bit of extra cushion for the push-in. 
One thing I noticed and something I love about the Silverlight sock is that that padding runs over the top of the toes near the seam there because not only do you want padding on the heel and the bottom of the forefoot where there's a lot of pressure obviously but you also want some padding on the top because it's quite common in a lot of shoe and boot designs to have a very narrow uh, front of the boot which squishes the toes together which is another thing I don't like but that's happening whether you know it or not and so that's where you're getting a lot of rubbing and friction on the top of your toes and if you've ever had a blister on the top of your toes you're probably cringing right now because it is not something you want especially on a long distance hike. The fifth and final thing that I would be looking for in a good hiking sock is that it is anatomically shaped meaning that the sock is designed specifically for the left or the right foot. So you can see when you have an anatomically shaped sock that the left and right sock is completely different. Obviously you have tapering on the inside here just like the shape, the shape of your foot. So in order to get the optimum kind of fit then you really should be looking for socks that have a design that is specifically for the left and the right. Your left and right foot are inherently different. They're actually the opposite. They're the mirror image of one another. So if you're wearing a hiking sock that is not specifically designed for the left and the right, then you're simply not getting the optimum fit for your foot. Now, this is something that has been updated in these socks. The original version that I wore, I believe, wasn't anatomically shaped. Still a great sock, amazing, but that was one of the things that I sent uh, back in my early kind of reviews for this company as advice that I hoped they took on. And I'm super glad that they did because the anatomical thing does make a big difference to me. So I'm really glad to see now that this newer version that I've brought out has a left and the right. Now, <laughs> unfortunately, they haven't marked them left and right. Uh, they've marked the size with L. So if you do get a pair of these socks, you'll see that the left one has venture on the inside and then the right one has out on the outside. So uh, Ralph, uh, Silverlight guys, if you're watching this, just put left and right, make it easy for us so we don't have to <laughs> work out the puzzle to figure out which socks to put on which foot. So having that different anatomical shape for left and right it really gives you the most snug fit to your foot that minimizes any slipping or bunching that could potentially happen, especially when you're on, uh, when you're traversing side sort of slanting terrain where you're potentially off trail. You'll notice that your socks will tend to slip and move and bunch around when you're on tricky terrain like that. So the better fit that you have, you're far less likely to end up with hot spots and blisters and general discomfort when you're out on a trial. So there's really not a lot of hikers talking about in detail about their socks that they're using, so that's why I wanted to make this video. If you are interested in checking out the sock, then go on the website and have a look because there is a wealth of information on the site, tons more information, things that I couldn't fit into this video, a lot of detail. And on the website, you'll notice there's a couple of other really good reasons why you should get a pair of socks from Silverlight. Firstly, you have a lifetime guarantee it is a stupidly incredible guarantee. You can send a pair of socks back at any time for no reason at all and they'll send you a new pair. So <laughs> that's pretty impressive. I don't know how they're getting away with it, but they're offering it. There is also worldwide free shipping on this sock so you can get a couple of pairs. You can get one pair if you like and they will send it to you no matter where you are in the world. Again, that's pretty impressive. They're also a company that is very kind to the environment. I think this is really the bare minimum that outdoor companies should be doing now, which is great to see, don't get me wrong, but these guys are planting a tree for every purchase sold. They're also using recycled nylon rather than just like fresh nylon, which, which is obviously pretty wasteful when you can just use recycled nylon. So I'm super psyched to doing that. You might be wondering where they're made. They are made in China. I wouldn't be surprised. Anything that is made with a high level of precision and involving a lot of technology, particularly in fabrics and materials, it's probably coming out of China. The reason why is because the machines that spun this silver yarn, there's only about three of them in the world and I think all three of them are in China. So if you're looking for a high quality sock, more than likely it's gonna come from China. I mean, yes, globalization sucks, but what are you gonna do about it? Uh, by all means, buy local, but don't expect this kind of quality. So here's the deal. I'm not getting paid to do this. Uh, these guys sent me this sock about a year ago. I used it, I loved it, I had some comments and some feedback and they've taken that on board thankfully whether it was from me or from someone else the main thing is that they've made those changes and they've made 
a much better sock. And quite frankly, I've never been so confident in recommending a product in my life. This is a very small company and I'm super happy to support them. They aren't paying me. They have given me a whole bunch of socks, maybe like five or six pairs over the, uh, over the last year or so. And I love the fact that they're committed to continually improving the product. And if you've learned anything from this video, you've learned that socks are much more important than what most people give them credit for. So I'd really encourage you to look at those five boxes, you know, get your socks out, see if they tick these boxes, because more than likely, if you are having an uncomfortable experience when you're hiking, it's probably coming down to the socks, and if not, your sock shoe combination. Having said all that, these guys have set me up with an affiliate link. So if you do want to buy a pair of these socks, you'll be supporting the channel. I'll earn a little bit from every purchase. So thank you for that in advance. Go to the link in the description if you want to check this out and let me know what you think. There's been maybe 20 or 30 people so far that have purchased them and I've got nothing but great feedback. And if you have bought these socks, let us know in the comments how they're going. I would love to hear from you and your experience. If you do want to go down this route and get a pair of these socks and you're worried about sizing, I'm a 10 and a half US in uh, New Balance shoes and I have got a large. Like I said, there is a compression element to this sock, so it's meant to be a little snugger and a little tighter than your average hiking sock, so just keep that in mind. And lastly, before I wrap the video up, I want to say one thing. Having expensive socks or high quality socks is not a luxury. If you want to have dry, healthy feet, you want to hike or trail run for a really long time, then it really is a necessity because it will save you a lot of time washing the socks and it will save you a lot of uh, potential pain and suffering from having stinky, wet, moist feet. Okay, let's wrap it up there. <laughs> Done. See you on the summit.